Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Um, I've had a slightly nuts idea, um, which I am really excited about. You may remember a while back, I did a triptych. I did one straight pour and I managed to stretch the straight pour over three canvases. This was the result um, and I absolutely loved it. So you can see there is one design there, but it is over three canvases kind of uninterrupted really one flows to the next which flows to the next so i felt it went pretty well i was quite happy with it so my slightly crazy idea i'm going to do exactly the same again but with the hexagonal canvases so i don't know if this will work i'm going to put three hexagonal canvases together um pour in the center and try and tilt it out as one. Um, who knows if this will work? Um, I'm so excited to try. So let me show you the colours I've chosen. These are the colours that I'm using. I've based my colour scheme really around these four colours. So the Royal and Langnickel Essentials colours, because I just find if I use those for straight pores, I get loads of cells. They have a really kind of bubbly effect. I really think they're pretty. But I think these, these this brand alone probably won't do that. So the, I want to use this brand, but with some other brands so that they, the cells can pop up through the other colours. So I'm going to use Thalo Cyanine Blue white cerulean blue magenta i've got amsterdam ultramarine violet i've got montmartre gold and turquoise and then i've got pebio studio acrylics iridescent orange yellow so there's no real theme to this this color scheme just that i thought the colors could look quite good together um so they're all there ready so let me show you my setup. I'm reusing canvases, so three 40 centimetre hexagonal canvas, canvases. I put gesso on them so they're primed and ready to use. Um, I've put double sided sticky tape down these cracks, down these edges, but it wasn't really enough. So what I've done, if I can show you underneath, is put some tape, some fragile tape, just to hold the bottoms together. I've also levelled all three canvases separately on the floor. Um, so I know that independently the canvases are level because I will obviously take this apart and then they'll dry apart. So it doesn't matter at the moment, particularly if this is level as one, because it's all going to be pulled apart as soon as the paint is on. Um, I need a light surface. So at the moment I've got a big piece of cardboard I've rested this on so I can lift this and tilt this. There's a chance that because it's only cardboard, it might bow under the weight of this. But when I did it before, I used such a heavy piece of wood, I found it so difficult manoeuvring the canvases. So this is this, this is what I'm going to go with. This is what I'm going to try. I've decided to layer up a jug. Um, I had my largest plastic cup, which I guess was a pint cup, but I'm just worried that's not going to be big enough. I've mixed up a fair bit of paint and I think I'm going to need to use a lot of it or most of it because... Although the, this, the span of the, the size of the canvases isn't massive, I've got to tilt it in three completely different directions. So I just feel that having more paint will be best. Um, right, let me show you the consistency. Um, it runs really, really nicely. It's really smooth and really creamy, but and it leaves a trail, but it's not too thick. I've just found, I used to do it in equal parts, paint and pouring medium. I'll put the recipe in the description of the video, but I used to do equal parts and I just found it was a bit too thick. So it's now five parts pouring medium, four parts paint. Um, so in each cup, in fact, yeah, in each cup, I put 100 grams of pouring medium and 80 grams of paint. With the exception of the iridescent ones, I put slightly less paint and slightly more water because they're always a bit thicker. So this is the order I'd like to go in. Um, I'm going to start, though, with a little bit of white. Um, I wanted a jug as well, as opposed to a large yoghurt pot or something like that, because I wanted to have a lip to it, because I just think that works a lot better for pouring. So just a little bit of white in the bottom, and then I'm going to go round in this order. So I'm just pouring down the side of the cup. So I'm going to just get lots of lovely layers on top of each other. I want reasonably thick layers. I did an experiment recently with layering up the cup and I found having slightly thicker layers just left the colours a little bit more prominent and obvious. But because I've got quite a lot of each colour, um, I will be doing, there'll be thick, reasonably thick layers, but there'll be quite a few layers. Mm. 
Right, that is absolutely beautiful. What a gorgeous, gorgeous jug of paint. So it's almost up to a litre, so just under a litre of paint. That is a lot of paint. Right, let's pop these aside and I'll get my canvases over. Right, I really hope this is going to work. I hope you're going to be able to see this okay. My tripod is up really high to try and get everything in. Um, so the canvases are factionally different heights and there is still a slight gap between them all. Um, so what I will do is put down um, a puddle in the, in the centre first. So I'm hoping the puddle will fill the gaps. Then I can pour over the top. There's going to be lots of paint, so I should be able to, to spread it out quite nicely. Um, let's just put a nice puddle in. So I always tend to mix up too much paint. The good thing about that is that I can use that then as a flow extender and as a puddle. So this piece of cardboard has got little edges to it. All oh, right, see now I can see already that this isn't staying together. So I might have to yet yeah, get underneath it. This is going to get very messy. Yep, yeah, and it's moving, so maybe I should have stuck it down. Right, I'm going with it. So I'm going to pour right into the center. I'm pretty nervous because this is a lot of paint to waste if this doesn't work, but I won't know unless I try. So I'm going to pour into the centre. I'm going to move my hand up and down so it varies the speed that the paint is flowing. And then I'm going to twist around as well because I like the effect that that gives. So in fact, I might start right over here. Here goes. Right, really happy with the amount of paint. It's about to drip over. Um, I'm happy because it's, it's, in, it's going into each of the three sections. So I'm just going to have to go with this, see what happens. I can see that the two canvases nearer me. Oh, I didn't put a flow extender down. Right, I can see this ridge here. This isn't working here at all. Let me just put some flow extender down. I'm just sliding a piece, something really solid underneath. Although this is going to add to the weight, it will make it more difficult to tilt it. I'm really concerned about the fact that the canvases are separating and so I think it needs something firm underneath. And then I think I'm just going to try and pick the whole thing up and tilt from this board underneath. Oh, another thing I haven't done is torched. I feel like I need to rush, but actually I don't because that paint is not going anywhere. I can take my time, I don't need to rush it. I've got the effects I wanted. 
from the paints, I can see already I'm getting some absolutely beautiful cells and details. I think I'm going to have to go over one court, one side, come back. I'm just going to have to take it in turns with each with each corner, I think. I've almost finished tilting. I thought I had finished, but then I've just taken a step back and this one is quite busy and that's because it ha it had the ridges from the painting. So it just bit quite busy compared to the other two. So I'm just going to tilt further this way, always towards the outside so that I can keep everything beautifully lined up on the inside. I like this as a painting on its own, but I just feel like I want to just remove a little bit of that paint right at the bottom just to make it a little bit less busy so I think it will then actually match the other two better Yeah, I like that. Right, let me get you in for a close up. So that got really quite stressful at one point. Um, the canvases should have been somehow taped together a lot, lot better because they clearly just all fell apart. But then I realised that I could actually tilt them individually. And as long as this bit didn't get um, distorted, they do all still line up perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Um, so let me show you one by one. They're all so different. Um, this one, this is the sort of lacing and the beautiful effects you get from um, the paint that I've used. You can see the gold in there sparkling next to the blue. L loads and loads of lines. And then you've got this really bright pinky orangey line through around the edge there and a real streak of bright white there. Um, I was quite hesitant about this piece to start with because it's got such a design. Um, but actually, I think I really like that because it just adds to... I mean, if they were all the same, it would look boring. So it just I think it's just the character of this one. Now, this line here, really interesting, that was where the paint ridged in the gap. But look at the cool effect it's it's created. It's It's unusual I've never done had that before but it's because of it as it went over the ridge of the canvases there's definitely room for improvement on this technique um, there's definitely there must be ways of keeping the canvases tighter together and getting a, a slightly more sort of polished finish perfect finish uh, but look at that so so pretty and then this one, I think this is probably my favourite canvas. You've got the lines. So a line there, and I think I tilted one off. You've got the different lines from the edge of the paint. So if you imagine this was tilting over this canvas, and this was a new wave of paint coming over the top. So that's been created as the paint has gone over the edge of the canvas in the middle. 
Um, so it wasn't intended to be there, but it just, I think, it, again, it just adds to it, gives it a bit of character. Um, there's the perfect, for me, there is a perfect blend of blues and pinks. Little bit of turquoise. Turquoise hasn't taken over. Um, I love these bits. So these bits happen where, where you've got some transparent colour next to some opaque colour. So you can you can see through. It just looks watery. It's beautiful. Um, so fingers crossed I've levelled these properly. Fingers crossed they dry well. So here they are dry. I'm so excited because it's worked. Just look at, look at the centre. You can see the pattern. It just it flows so all three canvases are totally connected in the center sorry about the the light they're flat on the floor so the lighting is really bad at the moment um they're all connected so if i stand back you can see the pink section flows on you can see that this white section comes through here and up here so you've got pink at the edge pink at the edge um it all works i am so pleased um, so I'm just going to line them up in my kitchen on my worktop now and then I can show you them close up without getting quite so much glare. So I actually really like them side by side. I'm actually really amazed. So they're all the same but different. So actually, I think as a triptych in the, the way I poured them or side by side, I think they could work really well. You could also hang them um, like this. Sorry, my arm's not long enough. So you could hang them in a, just in a, in a diagonal line. You could put them on, the, on a point, on a corner. You could just do so much. Um, so let me show you them close up. Um, the colours are just fantastic. They are just so bright and bold and cheerful. The blue has retained its real electric blue. The brightness is just such a happy colour. Um, so there is, I think that's the pink and the gold together and it just looks orange. Which, so it's just this wonderful, wonderful bright pop of colour through there. Oh, now actually I think that is the orange next to the pink. I think actually that is orange, gold and pink next to each other. But look at the cells and the effects and that wateriness, that transparency there. Um, and then let's move on to this one. So this is the one with the really bright white um, streak. What I love about this is the gold comes alive now. Can you see how iridescent the gold is? Maybe if I go even closer. Oh, look there. Can you see how sparkly and shiny the gold is? So instead of the white taking over, I really feel now it's dry. The gold is actually coming through so much. Um, this was one of my favourite sections, wet and same dry. So, so pretty. Again, it's just the colours. The colours are just so nice together and then this was the last canvas that I tilted where you had the waves of paint over the top so it created just totally different effects um, and again just look it's just so pretty you've got it, it looks like water but you've also got this 3d effect um, you've got a bit more of the turquoise peeking through there and then just again just these wonderful wonderful blues um, so I'm absolutely over the moon with this. It was hard work. Um, I think I'd have to plan it differently to, if I did this again. Um, but let me know what you think. Do you think this has worked? Um, should I try this again with different canvases, more canvases, different shapes? I just, I'm open to ideas because I loved doing this. What an experiment it was. Great. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up um, and leave me any comments or thoughts you want to. Great. Thanks for watching. Bye.